This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Production services by Sidekick Media Services. And listeners like you supporting us at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast episode 554. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Ready to talk some geeky stuff with you guys today. First of all, we have with us from Studio C in the Big D of Doran, PA. He is the gadget guru, uh, something something Esquire, Big Bank International Esquire. <laughs> uh, John Chichilla, how you doing, sir? You just call me he who forgot his Nintendo password. Yeah, he's uh, he's gonna be he's gonna be giving us updates about remembering his Nintendo password throughout this uh, this episode. Apparently, so well, I'm I'm resetting the password right now. Okay, let's know how that goes. Also, with a uh, social media extraordinaire and a uh, 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 super Grogu fan today, from from what I've seen on Instagram, Katie the Dutters is with us. <laughs> yeah, I've been wearing oh, wear there my it Grogu. Is. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. My shirt, my pants, had my socks on earlier. There All you go. out. Fantastic. And back on the show, another uh, technical expert at Big Bank International Esquire, Ron Cross is back with us. Hello. Hey, it's a Star Wars kind of night. Yeah. So, how's everybody? Excellent. Excellent. And you're you're either, you are not in Pittsburgh or McKee's Rocks. No, uh, I you am are. Not. You were somewhere else, and uh, I don't know if you want to reveal that now or along with your awesome thing of the week here, but uh, <laughs> you're, like, you're like me and up in Ann Arbor last month. You're, uh, you know, on the road, so um, no, good to have you back with us, uh, Rod. Great to be here. So anyways, this is the Awesome Cast. You can check out everything at awesomecast.com. He can, uh, of course, hit us at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Awesome Cast on the Twitters. Awesome Cast on the Facebook page and the group where a lot of stories are uh, put in there uh, throughout the week. And please subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app. And uh, you can watch the video versions on Facebook and uh, YouTube. And, of course, we are live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time on the Awesome Cast Facebook, YouTube, and the Sorgatron Media Twitch page. You can follow along there, whatever is easier for you to watch watch the show participate in the show be in the chat room of course a lot of that uh, a lot of the most active chat room is certainly over on that facebook page that we have going on there uh where a lot of people will join us throughout the evening here uh again every tuesday at 7 p.m eastern time also shout out to our friends at postindustrial.com uh that have been uh, supporting the show and let them know their their audience know about what we got going on over here also a huge thanks to our patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesome cast our friends at the coffee club level matt weller john DeGore, john carmen cynthia klosky of shift collaborative scott to mctaggart of the great pitchworks podcast and mike pound uh that's joined us and uh fan of the show a level our friends michael fedora pghmuseums.org professor buzzkill uh, dave ponder of the iphoneography podcast you guys support the show too at patreon.com slash awesome cast including my first reactions to uh, uh krause's awesome thing of the week actually <laughs> so as a person who was uh, uh i reminded that certain kinds of flying may not be my cup of tea uh but anyways Let's get into our awesome things of the week. And since we teased it, Cross, what, what is yours since you're bringing a fun, tiny I, one? I flew on itty bitty planes. Itty bitty planes. <laughs> the first one was an eight seater, and the second one was 11 seats. I mean. Jeez. With a single engine prop, you know, it was one of those things. I'm, I'm down here in Virginia helping out my brother in law. He's recovering from. A, an illness and um you know i have the luxury of working from home so i needed to come home because uh, my wife had a birthday party that she wasn't going to go to by herself so for 85 bucks i found this flight and fig found out that it's on these little tiny planes and that's the airport in west virginia that we stopped at it was basically two hot flights so one from dallas to West Virginia and then from West Virginia to Pittsburgh. And it was, I, I got to tell you, it's an experience when you're literally sitting in the same cabin with the co pilot and the co-pilot. 
This is <laughs> there crazy. was no door. <laughs> oh no! So, so what? What did they tell you when you're getting on the plane again? Oh yeah, and when you get on the plane, I was the last person on the plane, and the co-pilot said to me, "Excuse me, have you ever flown with us before?" I'm like, "No, this is my first time." He goes, "Oh, good. I need you to close and lock the door." <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. I close and lock the door to the airplane. Well, like, like, like you know, there's the there's the emergency row where like, are you willing to open the door if there's an emergency? But yours is like, please close and lock the door so we can take yeah. off. Yep, and wow. I did, and I actually did it. And it was funny because I had a double take. I was like, wait, excuse me, did I hear that correctly? Because. That was a first for me. I take it there's no in-flight drinks on this one or service. No, there's no in-flight drinks. <laughs> was there even a bathroom? No, no, no bathroom. You couldn't stand. You yeah, know, the seat was. In fact, I think I have. If you look at the the first set of photos, I actually have a um, a little video of the plane taking off, and the sound in the cabin is amazing. Not that anybody's <laughs> going to be able to hear that sound over this. But if you get a chance, look me up on Facebook. It's from last weekend. And it's just incredible. I think that's the second set of videos. Oh, okay, okay. I was looking at I was looking at apparently the third one. Okay, uh let's yeah. see what I got here. Yeah, but the sound is incredible. I don't know if I'm far enough see, here. Hearing the the propeller you know, start cranking and then the plane start moving down the runway. It was amazing. Wow. So, that's great. I, I would have like tore open a bag of M and M's and been like to the pilot, "Hey, do you want some of these?" <laughs> I wasn't that close. <laughs> I was literally in the last seat in the plane, and the crazy part was too, they weighed everyone, yeah, and everything. So even though my bag, I carried my bag on, they weighed it like everything. They and I heard overheard the pilot and the co-pilot talking about that they had a hundred pounds of ballast so that they could evenly distribute it through the plane. And, you know, yeah, it was all. That's got, fun. yeah, that's got to get a little touchy there, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, that, that's, that's, oof. okay. I know you said no, but I think everybody should oof. have to experience it. Once. I'm sure I'm going to have to run into this sooner or later. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> my luck, the way things are going. Um, wow. Wow. Well, well, I'm glad, glad you, not me. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know if I just cowering in the back, or again offering offering the pilot M and M's. But um, so <laughs> it was. Inc- it was a very incredible experience. And let me tell you, when you fly through clouds in a plane like that, you know how you'll feel a little bit of bumpiness on a, a big plane <laughs> on those ones because the plane's not as heavy. Yeah. So it. Yeah, we got some. We got some motion going. It was good. Oh no. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm I'm getting, I don't need this before getting on a flight tomorrow from a small regional airport. You'll be on a jet. Don't worry. Somebody was sitting there. I was talking, we were talking about, yeah, we're taking spirit. I've never done it before, but the the guy I'm going with does it all the time. And, uh, and I I can't remember if they said spirit or frontier. I think they said frontier. It was like, oh yeah, they have like the oldest planes. I'm like, not, not, not a good time. We tell them this kind of things you know so uh they have those, me, kinds of those, things yeah, those planes are newer than these ones i'm sure yeah oh yeah, there's that too so yeah well uh let's get uh, a little more grounded here with some uh, awesome things uh, other more awesome things of the week uh and let's stay with a different kind of flight uh, katie <laughs> so uh, you may have heard there <laughs> there was a little bit of a space thing happening today mm-hmm. uh space thing and uh you know a lot of the talk was like bezos 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 whatever uh i thought the most interesting passenger on this was wally funk and um she's 82 years old and in 1961 she was supposed to go to space but she didn't get a chance because they you know she went through all these tests and tests and things and um like they talked about she did 87 exams one point, she swallowed three feet of rubber hose to guzzle a pint of radioactive water and trying to become one of the first female astronauts. And then at the end, NASA was like, well, there's no program for female astronauts. Mm-hmm. Sorry. And she found out by telegram. It's so wild. And um, <laughs> this article in the Washington Post was great about a lot of the background. 
but she was able to be a part of it today. And um, she said, I've been waiting a long time to finally get up there. And I've done a lot of astronaut training for the world. And I could always beat the guys in what they were doing because I was always stronger. And I want to go again fast. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I this keeps coming every time go, leading up to this, that that this flight has come up in the podcast I've listened to. Like she's come up and I've been hearing several like, you know, bits and pieces of, the, of her story. Like, I, I think they, they ended up running her, them out because they they ended up requiring that you had to be like a a jet pilot, like an F-19 pilot mm -hmm. or whatever it was at the time. Uh, and of course, no women were allowed to do that at, the, at that time. Um, right. and, uh, and and she's basically like she has taught every kind, has every license you can possibly get in aeronautics. <laughs> and this is like Amazing. the only thing she hasn't been able to do. That's fantastic. And I don't know if have you have you heard any of the, like some of the video uh about like about like what she was gonna say when she gets back down or anything like that she's a bit of a spitfire still at 82 that's great yeah <laughs> that's awesome yeah so i it was just like oh, you're like what are you gonna say when you come back and something like it was worth it you know <laughs> you know kind of thing <laughs> so um no glad to see that that happened today and uh I, of course, I only knew it happened today because everybody was commenting on the shape of the rocket. Uh, so, yep. Yep. <laughs> you know, we were talking about the uh, the rocket measuring contest uh, last week, and well, and we were spot on. Like, we, we were didn't spot even on. I, for, I forgot that, that I forgot because we've seen the rocket. There's been pictures going around with the rocket before, but I just figured it was a test thing or something. I didn't realize that was the actual make the actual like model <laughs> that they used, right? So, um, but. Uh, there, there you go. And this is, and this, so the wild thing to me is this is also the first human flight of this rocket. <laughs> so, I mean, don't you want a couple to go up before you put the rich guy on? I, I don't know. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, you know, obviously we're pretty confident with it, um, with everything. So, um, that's really cool. Oh, there they are floating once they got up there. That's great. That's great. Oh, she's adorable. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So some some great stuff coming out of that, and there's uh this looks like uh, uh, that might be a rendition of the uh, rocket landing, I guess, because it was like the the big thing, like just like SpaceX, there's self uh, landing rockets. So, oh, that's good, that's good. It's it's still like even I know it's rich guys and everything, but like still the space flight is still feels like Heck yeah, like it's, it's has awesome. We've had two in the last uh, two weeks, right? That were something like this, like like some kid out there seeing this and getting inspired, and hopefully gets an aeronautic and engineering. You know, you know, even if they're not the going to be the, the 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 next Bezos or anything like that. But uh, no, that's really really cool. So, if you had your choice, which one would you go on, Sorg? The uh, the one that was a real rocket. Yeah, uh, <laughs> right. That's exactly. Sorry. <laughs> You know, okay, okay, well, okay, let's, uh, you know, uh, real, okay, realistically, <laughs> I, I would probably do the one that's a plane first, me, so oh, the Virgin okay. Galactic one, then the rocket, because that's probably still a little, like, like, you know, to me, a little cringy, um, but, uh, but yeah, I'd want to get to the other one, but, <laughs> so, so, so the Virgin Galactic could be a nice step up for you, you know, mm -hmm. When we get to that point, that's hopefully a little more accessible. So, oh, sword. Okay, so which one are you taking? Are you taking the space plane or the one prop uh, plane that Krauss was on? Can we? Can, does this? Does the prop plane? Can we get up there and the prop plane launches from the space plane? <laughs> that's kind of what happens. There you yeah. go. <laughs> Planeception of some sort, I guess. So. I mean, it, I mean, it's it's a little more, you know. There's some pictures here of the Virgin one, and it just like it just seems a little uh, more, you know. I need the commercial flight. I need the one with the in-flight service while we're in space. Okay, so <laughs> that's there's no drinks on this flight. I don't know about it. You like, want some tang on your space? Flight? Yeah, I want some tang. Are you <laughs> kidding me? I want the full experience. Give me the space ice cream. That was my favorite, my favorite part of going to the science center. But like, hey, hey, can we get some space ice cream? <laughs> we still pick that stuff up. It's delicious. It's I know, right? Like it's just like hey, just have this like dehydrated ice cream that's warm, you know. Anyways, uh, Chilla, what's your awesome thing of the week? So my awesome thing of the week is a couple things Pokemon. So I've um over the weekend was Pokemon Go. So a number of cities around the world participated. 
Um, Pittsburgh, unfortunately, was not one of them. Maybe mm. next year. Um, I know like Nashville, Philadelphia, there were a bunch of them. Um, <clears throat> they will be the first link first. Um, the one thing to call out when you think about, I mean, the, the, the state of affairs and COVID and, and whatnot, um, obviously people could participate from their house, um, but obviously you were inspired to get out and get around. But I was actually in remote raids as far as Peru. Um, I think that's the furthest one I joined. But <clears throat> over the weekend, trainers caught 1.5 billion Pokemon, spun 900 million Pokestops. There were 23 million raids, and trainers collectively walked over 125 million kilometers. Wow. Um, so it was a big weekend for Pokemon players out there. Um, each day it started around 10 o'clock your local time and went till 6 p.m local time the cool thing on the thing the first day was a number of um the complete to unlock special weekend only pokemon i mean you kind of picked your path through some of the quests um on the second day it was all raids um, which then caused a flurry of twitter activity to get people to friend you um, i think i grew from 20 friends to probably about a hundred on wow. Sunday. Um, so you could get into remote raids. Um, as long as you had a friend that was in a raid, <clears throat> they could invite up to five. There could be up to five remote players. I think it was um, in any, any given raid. I used that technique a number of times to take out a number of Pokemon. I think I increased my legendary count from like three to probably about Did we lose you? Did we lose him? And the internet does not like me. Yeah, you're breaking up yeah. pretty good there tonight. It's crazy. Maybe you, it's not pushing all the Ks. Choking on your Ks, pushing man. Pushing all the Ks. On I'm, your four Ks. The only thing I'm choking on, I think I'm choking on... Um, is your Switch downloading all the internets? The Switch is downloading the the all the internets. <laughs> Anyways... So, uh, so awesome. Pokemon Go. I, 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 I did pull it out a little bit on my trip, just briefly at least. So, but I can't, I mean, I want to get back into it, but just kind of mental bandwidth. So I didn't play it. Good. And then in addition to that, and the reason the, uh, switch is out is because Pokemon Unite is launching, um, tomorrow on switch mm. in September on mobile. Um, but it was available for pre-download right now. Mm. Um, and there's some specific unlocks on the Switch if you if you get it and log in before I think the end of August. So I'll be I'll be trying that out too. Awesome, go check that out. So it looks like a, yeah, it looks like a more fuller Pokemon, right? I I don't know what's the what's the biggest thing with the with the unite or yeah was it unite is that it? The un, unite it's like a massive multiplayer online. Oh, nice battle. Um, that you obviously don't, you don't have to walk around, right? Yeah, but, that you don't have um, to leave your house for this time. Yep. So awesome. Well, uh, my awesome thing of the week is uh, something Steam put out there, and actually my brother uh, over there, go follow Lord Sorg on your uh, in uh, sorry Facebook and your Twitch. He's doing some great great game streams over there, and of course takes over the studio in October for uh, Extra Life usually. Uh, but uh, so Steam out of nowhere came out with the Steam Deck. It's up for pre-order. It starts at three ninety nine. It's starting the ship in December of this year. You can reserve it now. It's a very Nintendo Switch looking device, and it's going to run Linux. It's going to run probably most of your Steam games, um, and it's actually using. They don't have to convert things for a. a Linux version, they're actually running a sort of compatibility mode from the sounds of things that's going to let everything uh, play on there. But of course, you could, if you'd like, if you're so inclined, uh, you can definitely uh, uh, load Windows on it just to play that too. Uh, so it goes up to, I think, as high as $650, depending on how much uh, on, on device storage you want to use. Uh, it's a nice size screen. Again, it starts at four hundred dollars. Although that's like only sixty four gigabytes, and that's like sometimes a game. So 
<laughs> like, so I don't know what if you'd want to uh, do something like that. Uh, but oh, 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 oh. So there it is. Wait, connect the peripherals through a picture on the remote, big screen. Removable storage. Oh, there is removable storage in it. Okay. Yeah, that I an SD slot, I think. There's an SD. Okay. So, so that is definitely expandable. Just throw a terabyte card in there and let's go. Uh, and again, it's like all of your like. Listen, I, I'm so, I got over 300 games in my library over the years because I bought a lot of sales and packs and stuff. Uh, so like right off the bat, while I don't have like the full on like brand brand new games, like I'd have a lot to play on this thing. I'd probably do kind of okay with the 64 uh, gig version there, right? So um, I, this. This looks promising. I, I don't know. I, I don't know entirely what who's this for, but if it's like you don't you want something portable, and these are the same games that are on your Xbox, they're on your uh, PS5 in a lot of cases, and those don't have portable solutions right now. And Steam would be the only thing uh, aside from doing the Nintendo Switch. And honestly, and I'd like to see. Uh, I don't know if there's a specs comparison, but I gotta imagine this thing's probably a little more powered than even what the Switch does. Uh, so, so, so for the Steam, for the portions of your Steam library that are Windows only, mm -hmm. this, th they'll still run on this? Uh, supposedly, yes. Uh, I, I'm curious if it's going to be 100% compatibility with uh, Windows games. But uh, it, 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 it does say that there's just this compatibility layer they built into Linux that is going to, I guess, emulate. It's probably just a Windows emulator of some sort. But, of course, I'm sure it's fine-tuned to the specific hardware. Uh, to run better, so you know we won't know until December until somebody gets in their hands and, and sees how these games perform. I can't imagine this thing performing like if you bought a two thousand dollar gaming Alienware laptop, for, perhaps. But it's also a smaller screen and things too. Um, mm -hmm. So, but again, I, I you know I don't see this as a primary game device. I consider it as the on the go game device if you you know if if you so desire. So I got to ask the question and play devil's advocate here. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you, Sorg, if you look at line four, oh, is it 14? Yeah, line 14 of the doc. Um, uh, Windows Central posed a question about, you know, these handheld consoles are hot. And, you know, I own a Switch. Here's mine right here. And I got to tell you, with Game Pass now and some of the stuff, you know, my phone works great. Mm -hmm. I find myself less and less go going to the switch and more and more picking up you that, know game, yep. the game pass games and yep. playing those that's what justifies me not getting a switch is this thing here like like yeah, being you know able to I mean? play like, those and you know with the tablet you can do it on a tablet you can, you know break out the xbox controller and you know you're good to go it's, it's interesting so there are certain games that i no longer load up on the xbox and i only play on the switch right now, I'm going to take my first leap, hopefully this week, into a little more playing with xCloud and iOS. Because, Ron, I don't know if you noticed, Crimson Skies is coming to Game Pass. It's in the list. <laughs> I have it on the list. I'm mm -hmm. so excited. So excited. I love it. No, wait, that. Crimson Skies, is that, is that like an Xbox, like an original Xbox game? Original yep. Xbox, mm -hmm. yes. Huh. So awesome. It was, I think, was it multiplayer LAN only, or did see, they have live? I don't remember. Jeez. I think they had live. I think we, the, the original see, I thought only had LAN, but the yeah, see, I, I think you're right. But the the remake had the yeah. I I I'm gonna tell you because Conquer's uh, Conquer uh, Reloaded, uh, the the remake of the Net N64 game is just dropped <laughs> on game games with gold. So uh, that's where I'm at with that. Uh, I'm sure it's coming to game pass sooner or later. I'm surprised it hasn't yet. And we should have a well, game night sword. Yeah. Oops, guys for sure. 100, well, especially now that I'm down here, I got every night during the week I could play. So mm -hmm. we should do definitely do a show crimson skies night. That would be awesome. Oh, I'll get up in the, I'll get up in the Twitch lab and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do then. Uh, hit me up afterwards. We'll get something scheduled. Okay. Well, I, I wonder if the Steam Deck will have a browser. It's it's now, it's that Linux. Would be compelling. It's Linux. <laughs> it, it sure does. So did, so does that mean that your Game Pass is potentially going to work in that? Potentially. Right off the bat. Wow. Yeah, and I mean the looks of this device. I really like the trigger placement. I, I mean like the back. I mean keys. I don't see any USB C reason. dock. So you could run HDMI, a keyboard, a mouse. Right. 
hypothetically, the large monitor. I don't see any reason why you can't like they've already said you can throw Windows on this if you're so inclined. Why can't you do that and then you have Game Pass and you can download games to this device? Oh, it depends on how it runs them, and it's gonna. I'm guessing it's not an Intel processor, so true. I don't know how that's gonna work. Yeah, because we didn't get any like actual specs of what's in the device, right? I don't know, and the, the I, I noticed I was looking at it. it tops out at six forty nine. It's, mm-hmm. it's a pricey. I mean, you can get the one as cheap as three ninety nine. Right, absolutely. You want faster storage, and, anti glare etched glass. And, and this is interesting because like Xbox doesn't need to do a portable console because again we're all walking around with portable consoles with our phone, right? So like that seems that seems pretty good to go. So. Um, and for six forty nine, you can buy a pretty decent full PC. Oh yeah, oh mm-hmm. yeah. The the streaming computer is a gaming PC that I bought for eight hundred dollars like five yeah. years ago, and look how well it's doing. And then right. I have thrown a game on it uh, here or there uh, before we went full on streaming with it, and uh, it played things very very well. It's got even just an Intel graphics in it, you know, for the time. <laughs> But you're not. But I don't think this is for the for the at home, typically at home gamer. I feel yeah. like you could take this on a trip with you, and with you know one of those little USB C dongles that has a couple ports on it, mm-hmm. like uh, like one of these. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you'd have hdmi and a couple of usbs you could take it and plug it into the tv in the hotel room more than likely oh yes been doing a little bit and, of that. It, and it's a lot smaller than lugging around your pc mm-hmm. yeah you know your xbox travels too i'm just saying yeah it does well and also it and also right and, and also as i've been doing I, i've been treating my uh the the windows side of my laptop my macbook like my xbox and loading everything on an external hard drive I'm plugging uh, it in. Go. So I have like a terabyte of video games available to me that I can bring with me and play Rocket League in my in the hotel room like I did with Chachi to unwind from, uh, where was I, Michigan a couple weeks ago. Uh, so And I'm bringing it with me to Florida this week too, just be like, because there's a lot of thunderstorms in the forecast, so just in case. Uh, but anyways, I don't have to worry about because the problem with the Game Pass iCloud thing is it doesn't work in a lot of places because I'll be in a place that I don't have full bars and, you know, hotel internet, good luck, uh, and it doesn't work. So, you know, it, you don't, you don't want to be dependent on just that, that online thing. It's not persistent enough yet. But you know what is persistent, though, is our good friends up the street at Slice on Broadway, SliceOnBroadway.com, New York City style, Yinzer made, Beachview, Carnegie, East End, and the North Hills, four locations. And, of course, if you're not in the Pittsburgh area, please support your local pizza place, supporting the the Tuesday night pizza party. Uh, this is mostly happening in Mayhem Show lately, of course. But, uh, you guys, if Krause was in town, I'm sure he'd come by for a slice of pizza. Uh, but he may have to get on that tiny plane again to uh, to come partake. Uh, one of these days. So <laughs> uh, go check them out. Uh, SliceOnBroadway.com. Thank you to those guys for supporting Pittsburgh Podcast with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Uh, so we're on the gaming idea, and I think we – so this came out I, – I think this came out of, like, the wrestling side. Uh, I, I mean, I mean, look at it, right? Uh, there was a, a – Kota, Kotaku had an interesting story. So you can get a tr- a a – Cage for competitive. Well, let me try to bring it up here for competitive uh, trading card matches. You know, like UFC style. Uh, so <laughs> I I like this idea because it just makes it makes any like like your Pokemon uh, trading card uh, battle is just going to be uh, so much more hardcore with this. Uh, so I mean. The, the, <laughs> What do you what do you guys think of like trading card games in a in in a uh, cage like this? I like to do maybe like a video game uh uh esports could happen with this too. So to me what would be interesting on this is if they could hook it up where you could you could go into the cage, but then there was someone in another cage in a remote location with their deck. Because I mean you're not Typically, you're not. Um, it's not like you're using each other's cards very much. No. So it would be interesting if you could make it almost like an online 
show the other person's deck on the table. You have each of them in a of you. you have each of them in a pod. It, it looks like there's like some screens outside too, so you can kind of get a yeah. look at that. I mean, the ideal thing is you would put like a camera over them and then display that, kind of like we've seen with the when they used to do replay effects in the in the pinball games, right? You'd have a camera like a GoPro over it and you throw the screen up on 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 the big screen along with like you know them reacting or something like that. So or make or, or make it where the other half of the table because most of your cards are going to be on the table, right? I don't know if you've played Magic the Gathering or Pokemon or anything like that. All your cards are on the table. If you made the other side of the table just a big screen and mm -hmm. projected from the remote location that person's deck, I, I don't know. I think it would be kind of fun. Mm -hmm. So um, there, there's a comment in here. Sadly, the cage is not electrified. So, But, man, it would add so much atmosphere to it. If I, if I was producing a... Uh, trading card uh, uh game like that i i, I you know uh, event like i i love that for the, just the atmosphere in general so awesome. it should have like a, an escape room component at the end like you have to do something <laughs> to open the cage like, you can't just be like i won and walk out i you like it do something i like it yes absolutely hey uh, Sork, since you mentioned wrestling while i was doing my searching for the show today did you see stars is coming out with some kind of wrestling show with the guy who played uh, Green Arrow? Yes. Uh, well, yeah, that's been that's been on it on for that's been. Oh, it's actually already ex, going. I ex, thought well, it it's was been expected for a while. Just coming it, out. It's been expected for a while, but it's probably just coming out now, actually. Yeah. Um, but Wait, uh, which Green Arrow? Stephen Amell? Yeah, like, Stephen Amell. Of CW. Or... Yes. Yeah, the CW guy. If so, you okay. uh, go to line eighteen, I put a link. IMDb. So I don't know, uh, Chilla. I don't know if you're aware of this, but Stephen Amell definitely is called Heels, which is the the title for the for the bad guys uh, in wrestling. And Stephen Amell actually, um, he became rather involved with wrestling. He actually was in a match. Uh, at SummerSlam several years ago, and he's done some stuff uh, in Ring of Honor with all the guys that eventually, you know, started AEW, like Cody Rhodes, right? And Cody Rhodes was actually on. Uh, a couple episodes of Arrow as one of the bad guys, uh, so uh, and I'm afraid to play this, but yeah, it's uh, it, it looks really good, but it's on stars, and uh, we're talking about the. I'm, I guess I'm gonna have to cancel Paramount Plus after I watch Quiet uh, Quiet Place Two, and uh, subscribe to watch the show. Uh, so, <laughs> um, but no, it looks really good, like selling it as Stephen Amell as a wrestler because he's. Uh, that's the other thing you don't notice until you uh, see him in a wrestling ring is how much smaller he is. Than the talent, uh, so. But I mean, actors in general. I was just listening to Kevin Nash on an interview talking about how hard it is for him to get roles because he towers against, uh, 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 he towers above every possible actor that's out there. Um, it, actors are short, short guys for the for the most part. But anyways, um, but yeah, I, this this is a we've had glow. We've had you know great movers movies like The Wrestler. Like I love that like professional wrestling is at this point where we're getting like movies and series that take it seriously. It's not just like a gag during Family Matters or something, right? Which was great at the time, by the way. I'm not not dish or Boy Meets World or anything like that. Uh, but uh, but like we're getting like real dramas about it because I mean if anybody knows about I mean Katie, you know a little bit about backstage of wrestling <laughs> and uh, <laughs> unfortunately and uh, and the drama is kind of real <laughs> sometimes. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, it, it's, I think it's, it's definitely recommended and, uh, well, I actually hadn't seen this trailer. I haven't seen a full on trailer like this yet. So I'm just kind of watching this in the background, but anyways, uh, what else have we got here? Katie, you have, uh, the story about Netflix and what they're up to. Yeah. So I don't, I think, I don't think we talked about this last week no. where we Netflix was, uh, teasing about games Yes, as, as part of the subscription service, uh, found out a little bit more info about it. Uh, they are going to start with, it's going to be mobile. It's mm -hmm. going to be the first part of it. It's going to be included in your subscription. And it still sounds like it's going to be mostly um, games like the Stranger Things game, uh, Black Mirror Bandersnatch. So more around their particular programming. Um, that'll be like the types of games. So it's not going to be uh, a whole new <laughs> system or a new no. thing you're going to be paying for, but just kind of like to complement the games. Because Netflix is very good at doing, um, I guess it would be kind of like guerrilla marketing. And stuff like that. Yeah, I, they they've been really good about that. I mean, we talk about like like Stranger Things and those like kind of haunted experiences and you know lift experiences and stuff right that mm -hmm. right. Um, so I, I I I'm curious to see how this goes. Is you know they already have um 
there were several things on there like they adapted the Telltale games. Like I think the Minecraft Telltale story games were a part of this. Like they turned them into video versions of the video games. Um, and that kind of choose your adventure thing. It was there was choose. Your, I know that Minecraft had the choose your own adventure. Yeah, but that was and that was like an adaptation of a Telltale game, right? Or like a video game that actually existed. They used that same um, engine. Yeah. You know, Telltale's engine to do like um, Walking Dead or one of them. Yeah, so they like just kind of pre-rendered it into a video version that still has all the choices in it, and they just used that Netflix interface in order to do that. So like, I I think this is just them saying, hey, we're going to do more of that thing rather than games games. Like, it's been really muddy. Like, are we talking more Bandersnatch? Are we talking more the Stranger Things full-on this is a video game that you install kind of thing? So, um, or is it, or is this kind of be some kind of mashup and it's like the uh, Xbox X Cloud streaming kind of situation? You, you know? guys remember, I think, was it? No, it wasn't The Expanse. There was a video game on the Xbox that had a TV show. And there, oh. to see Chilla, remember? You, 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 yeah, you got to pick what happened. Happened in the TV show. In the TV show. Really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what was it? I'm, I'm going nuts here. Uh, it was an MMO, I think. MMO. Was it one of those where you like, like you were like, it was the avatars, like the old the Xbox a- avatars that they used to do. No. So I remember like these game shows you'd be able to kind of get in on. Defiance. 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 That was it. I found it. Yep. Yeah, it was Defiance. It was on the Sci-Fi Network, and it was an MMO a shooting, a shooter MMO. But you, there was a component with the TV show. This thing. Uh, uh, yeah, if I, I think... Defiance Twenty Fifty is the game that I found here on. Uh, on no, YouTube. no, no. Here, I'll I'll give you another link. Okay. Show notes. Right under that other one. Okay, we'll pull it up here uh, in a second. Where did it go? There it is. So, but yeah, so th- this was a an, a shooter MMO, and like I said, and it there was a sci-fi TV show of the same name, and it was kind of like uh, you know that uh, whole like they had crazy bikes and hmm. vehicles and oh yeah. So this happened like a while ago? Oh, yes. This happened a long time ago. So did they use parts of the game in there, or was it just straight based on the TV show that was coming? 2012, yeah. 2012, based on the same role as the upcoming sci-fi TV show. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if they're going to try to do pull something off like that Mm. with Netflix, which I guess maybe down the road because that's probably pretty – large from just to start out with but they did try this before. i i would i wouldn't be amazed if netflix didn't get into that kind of cloud gaming kind of idea because yeah. it seems what, like it seems kind of the perfect next step for them and what was the was it on the surface rt there was one of the earlier devices where you had a you had a second screen experience with certain shows like if you were watching yes i think it was game of thrones Mm -hmm. you got extra map information about where they were at you got all kinds of sidebar information that was yeah that was uh i i was able to do that on my ipad um i think it was several devices you you could do it but if you had the h is the hbo app i think um no it was a it was an xbox smart glass app the smart glass. It was yes. a smart glass app, That's and it. you could you could vote for like you could vote for things. You could interact with other people watching. Yeah, because they did that for The Walking Dead. There would be like uh, trivia and stuff that would come mm-hmm. up during the episode. Then they'd show who got the most answers right in the fastest time and stuff. Nice, nice. Um, a lot of options there. So yeah, I, it, it's going to keep. It's going to keep stretching. Well, while we're there and talking about Game Pass, it sounds like there's a lot of really good games. Is, is there anything more than Crimson Skies we should be looking out for there, Kraus? 
the flight sim the flight sim itself i did try installing that i tried i installed it to my macbook pro on the boot camp side and it said my computer wasn't fast enough for it wow okay what the the, hell xbox one x is going to run it (laughs) yes so are you saying i'm not going to drop this on my xbox 360 no you're not when they're getting they're getting helicopters aren't they did i read that i believe so yes Okay. You're not going to be able to just fly planes. You're going to be able to fly helicopters. So you have you have that. You have um um. Let's see. Your Crimson Skies you're mentioning is going to be on cloud and console. Battlefield yeah. Five is coming to the cloud, which I don't know if there's a lot of EA play games on the cloud part yet. I think they're starting to roll them out, right? Oh, actually, I did hear something interesting for people on the Xbox One, the original one. Um, you know, with the cloud gaming, I don't know if you guys heard, you probably talked about it on a previous show, but they supposedly upgraded all those cloud hosted boxes to one X's. Mm-hmm. So you're actually going to be able to play a bunch of these games eventually yes. on your Xbox one on a cloud hosted Xbox one X. Absolutely. That, and that's going to be big. S. I'm sorry. It's an S not yeah. an X. But I mean, that makes what sense because who's going to be streaming 4k at this point? Right. So, what's the ascent? Some kind of cyberpunk you know game what? that's going to launch. I don't day care. It's going to be a day one launch on Game Pass. I'm not worried about the ascent because uh, they're going to have that classic mascot scroll uh, 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 platformer blinks on there. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which I think was Microsoft's attempt at trying to do a, you know, get their Sonic or Mario kind of guy. Uh, that didn't really work out well. But uh, Hey, another game. If you're in, if somebody's looking for a game and they're a Game Pass subscriber, I've been playing in the last couple of days a game called Control. Yes, love it. Very, love very it. good game. From the same very. people that did uh, Max Payne, and I played through all three Max Paynes. Yeah, very good game. Fantastic. Kind of creepy. Uh, yes, kind yes. of very creepy. Oh, there's a lot of uh, it's a lot of voices in your head kind of stuff happening, and uh, it's like if you play the original Max Payne and you had the baby level, but that's like the rest of the game. <laughs> yes, oh, no, right. Oh, you guys all know the baby level. <laughs> uh, the the uh, the the dream. You know, you're on a you're. You, you're on a line and and that you can't the blood? see. Oh yeah, you follow the blood. If you fall off the blood trail, you just like fall into a void because it's actually like a, a thin platform that's like invisible, right? So you know, like the end of Indiana Jones. No spoilers. Um, uh, Last Crusade, I mean. But uh, so uh, uh, yeah, no, no, definitely recommended. I, I, I started playing. That's the game I played when I was trying Amazon Luna. And I played like two or three hours of it, and then I was like, "Well, I'm not sticking around with Luna Pass's trial." And then it, it dropped on Xbox, so I played another like four hours of it and started yeah, over. It's, a, it's so, a really good game. And I'm now, really and now it's on my Epic account and my GeForce Now. So I'm like, "Do I start this over again?" <laughs> so, uh, but no, it's really good. It's really, really freaking good, um, and really, really, really trippy. Trying to get back into those. I think I'm going to have some uh, gaming weekends coming up here soon, hopefully. Um, where are we at? Where are we at? Kraus, you, I got another service for you. Now that you're talking me into signing up for stars for that wrestling program, I got to get you back. Okay? Okay. All right. So uh, don't you want CNN Plus streaming? Um, okay. Is this a trick question, he says? <laughs> No, no. Um, streaming. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. So not it's not going to be your your live the live stuff that's happening on your CNN. It's just additional content. I, this seems like their play uh, from everything I'm reading. I think it's comparable to what's already happening with the Fox Nation, where you're like, okay, can I get like the Tucker Tucker Carlson original? So can I get like the uh, special uh, Don Lemon special or something or other? Uh, so. Um, well, in the evening when there's not a whole lot of news shows going on, don't they do like marathons of like, um, uh, what's that shark tank and stuff like that? Oh, or really? Another one. I thought them? that was C- CNBC. 
Oh, maybe that's CNBC. Yeah, I felt like that was a CNBC thing. But, I mean, and they do specials and everything. I know on HBO Max, they already have a, a smattering of uh, CNN specials over there. So, But I don't know. That's that's the big streaming news of the week uh, that they're going to be getting. Uh, they're going to be getting into that. It's going to start in early 2022. Uh, and I believe there's probably a potential for that to be bundling in with something like HBO Max and Discovery, since that's all going to become one nice big happy family anyways spinning off from at and is going to go up when that merges uh i think your price is going to go up just generally i don't know if i don't know if that price of hbo is going to go up terribly much because it's already 15 dollars. that's what i'm saying right yeah. um i mean i get it with my at&t package because net neutrality is a joke uh so uh, uh but but you know i mean i don't mind because it's what i have but uh you know uh i get it's weird because yeah, i get I'm currently paying for both of them yes so i don't know that i would i honestly don't know that i would even i'm still trying to justify i keep signing up and then recanceling and then re-getting a free thing for paramount plus um and and that new ninja turtles series is not hooking me although the old sonic the hedgehog series maybe uh and some of these um and some of these other movies like Quiet Place 2. I, mean, I so I'm excited Quiet Place 2 is on there so I don't have to go to a theater like how I screwed up with Black Widow and went to just a crap theater because of it's what was there. And uh, uh, I am looking forward to sitting down to watch this, get some, get my Bluetooth Bluetooth headphones and watch Quiet Place Part 2. Because that's you need to block everything out, all your ambient, your air conditioner, whatever's going on and just be there in the movie. It's the only way to enjoy that movie. Uh, My wife watched it the other night, and she said during the movie she actually had to pause it because she started breathing heavy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, it, it's, it really messed with her. So. Like, it, like, I watched it in a theater in, I think, Maryland, and it was it was a nice-sized theater. You know, it was a really decent theater. Um, but the problem was it was so quiet that you heard, you know, there's like, you know, Fast and the Furious 7 was in the next theater, and you're just screwed. Okay? So, but, um, but no, that, that's, that's so looking forward to that. And that's really why I was hanging on to it, because I knew Quiet Place was coming. I can't think of any other movie. That Infinite one looks interesting, but it's not something I would have bought the service for with... Uh, um, is that I think it's a Mark Wahlberg one, maybe. Uh, so I don't know. So 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 that's happening. And of course, I'm holding out for Suicide Squad on HBO Max. I don't. I can't bring myself to watch Space Jam. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Speaking of the cloud, I was really interested in the possibilities of Windows 365. This is going to be. Um, and there's been more coming. I know it was a couple weeks ago that it was announced. Uh, but, uh, it's going, it's, it's basically windows 10 and eventually it'll be windows uh, 11 when they start upgrading everything in the cloud. Uh, it's kind of, I think it's mostly, they, they say it's for business customers from small businesses to large. So I'm trying to figure out how that does apply to small businesses like, like mine. Um, right off the bat, I started thinking about what it would be like if I could, um, deploy something like this for somebody I needed as an editor that maybe doesn't have a high end PC to run video editing software. But then I don't know the, uh, software eight, you can, you have, you have to configure the computer. It can be up to eight virtual CPU, 16 gigabytes of Ram and 512 of storage. Ooh, that 512 is kind of iffy for me. Um, but uh, and, and of course they're going to be talking about like dedicated GPU and more demanding users uh, options later down the line. I'm curious what that scale is uh, financially. But you know I think that's a really interesting and also does this work for you know video editing? Obviously we're talking about office. And, and how much would you be willing to pay per month? Um, Just curious. Well, I would have to look at <laughs> I, I'd have to look at that towards to, okay. What does that look like towards buying a comparable computer? So, so I guess here's where. So did you did you see any of the pricing model? Did not yet. Is it out? So what? So there were screenshots taken where they had shown they had previewed the like the ordering engine, mm -hmm. and without scale, meaning like small business less than like 50 virtual machines or something like that. They're talking $30 a month. Oh, mm -hmm. that's no way. For ah. a dual core, like four gig of RAM machine. <laughs> that could be. So, so if I wanted something really beefed up, we're probably talking about a hundred bucks a month. 
to be honest. Or and, and then I think if you had a GPU in there, I think you're getting more expensive. Well, if, now, if you're talking about, hey, I need to deploy these to have multiple editors. They don't have computers at home rather than buy $2,000 computers for each editor uh, to be able to do this. Um, because I, you know, I can't imagine a system where, you know, a, a system where I'm bringing people into an office regularly as a requirement necessarily. Um, you know, like, I mean, the, the, you know, one guy that I want to use for editor, he, he lives, you know, an hour away from the city. Right. So I'm not going to make him come in every day um, because I hate a commute. I'm not going to make other people do it. So if it's like, Hey, we put all of our Adobe and everything on this, uh, log into this. Cause I know you got decent internet out there and just go ahead and edit it away. There you go. Like that kind of idea. Um, so uh, it's something like something like that. I feel like it's something I could build into a project to deploy. You could probably build it into a project. I would question. Could you charge double to build it into the project and then pocket the other half and then save it and just start your own server farm at yeah. the office? <laughs> or just build a PC, put it on a credit card, pay the hundred dollars a month to the credit card company and then have them uh, RDP into your hi that's sitting uh, in your you know I wanna office. so so also also Ryan you gotta think about this. Um, I mean you guys do deployment and you know how it, you know BYOD versus provided devices and everything. So being yeah. a small business, the prospect of dropping two thousand dollars on a laptop, giving I it to a right. person and then well, no, when the project leave No, just leave office. it in your office. But and again, let them remote in because that's oh, all they're good. I mean that's what the Yeah that that's what Microsoft's giving you is a virtual machine. Okay, okay, okay. But this is also the do I want IT, right? No, yep. And it right. takes, that takes right. a little bit out of that. I want somebody else to handle it. So, and again, it depends on where that scale. Is it more important for me to not have to handle the, oh, hey, can you restart the computer? It's hanging because of whatever, you know, kind yeah. of thing or, or something like that. Or the Internet's down at your office because there's a thunderstorm, so I can't work up here where it's nice and clear. You know, like those kinds of, yeah. those kinds of scenarios. Um, so it's all about redundancy and reliability, right? Uh, as we discovered when whatever went weird when I attempted to uh, – uh, I don't know what happened to the internet tonight. You won't know on the podcast. We're going to fix it by then. Uh, so, but it never uh, happened. We uh, use a Jedi mind trick. Exactly, exactly. Katie, you're a, you're a Mac user. If you found yourself uh, working for an employer that has specifically software for Windows, would this be an option that you would uh, be looking forward to provided to you? Can I just use Teams? <laughs> Can you just use Teams? Yeah, because that's all in Teams. There's a uh, Word and Excel. I can make all that stuff in Teams. That is true. You could, you could do everything, and yeah, you could do everything via just your office license. I was just, I was thinking more like, hey, there's like, hey, we have got specialized <laughs> Windows software for to use because that's what we use at this business, kind of thing, right? Like, we don't use uh, Premiere. That's on every platform. We use, I don't know, Sodi Vegas or something, right? So you know, you, you, I and and I, you know. I've been looking at it and I'm kind of curious because I always see these ideas of virtual machines running uh, switching software like this vMix. I don't know if it's vMix, but it, like they're they're running uh, uh, streaming shows like this in an AWS instance. So does this become one of those kinds of options where I can do one of those? I you know that's the question. And I, I you know obviously some people are going to push this in implementation and and we'll we'll kind of have a better idea somewhere down the line. So. But anyway, well, have you have you thought about Mac Arena or I'm sorry, Mac Stadium? Mac Stadium? Yeah. Uh, Tell me more. So for fifty nine bucks a month, I mean, you can get a two point six gigahertz dual core CPU, Ooh. eight gig of RAM, two hundred and fifty gig SSD Mac oh. sitting in a this... sitting in Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> or Vegas or Silicon Valley or Dublin. Uh, well, you may have just answered my qu my prayers for uh, deploying Final Cut uh, Pro uh, implementations for people. That no, I mean, that does. price goes up to like you. I mean, you can go anywhere from what? Uh, Fifty nine dollars a month to two hundred nineteen dollars a month. Hmm. But I mean, if you're looking for quad, so six core is 179 they have m1s they have yeah you can do m you could do a cheap m1 mm. and that's supposed to just they've had amazing. that they've had that 600 dollars deal uh 
on Amazon for an M1 Mac Mini. And you don't know how much I've almost pulled the trigger on that one. Because I'm like, well, <laughs> So because I mean they'll they'll, they'll give you they'll give you they'll give you external hard drives plugged into the things for ten bucks a month. True, 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 true. What's that? What would you do about the data of the videos? Like, so you want somebody to do some editing. Mm-hmm. How long is it going to take to move? You know the I don't know terabyte worth of data or whatever. Buddy, I'm on FiOS. I don't care. <laughs> okay, dude, I'm on FiOS. I'm like, oh, this did this wrestling show come out to 22 gigabytes? All right, it'll be up in an hour. You okay. know, like that's it. That, but then it's a problem when I go on the road, like I am this week. I'm going to finish this wrestling show on the road, and I don't know how I'm going to upload a 22 gig file to or, over hotel Wi-Fi in Florida. Right. <laughs> so, and they're they're plugging a GPU enabler dongle into it. So, mm-hmm. you're gonna, have you seen that where like people that are running headless machines are actually buying these? It's like an HDMI connector without the cord that mimics it being plugged into a monitor so it and it forces up the gpu on the mac because hmm. you know how the mac will sit in it has both gpus in it it has the intel and then it'll have like the in the, uh, the ati yeah and it'll it, force it over to the ati side so if it goes headless it won't use the ati right interesting but the, the they put they put a GPU enabler dongle in all their devices, so it <laughs> forces it over. That's clever. That's clever. No, yeah, because uh, AMD. You mean? Um, yeah, because I got a Radeon. Yeah. It seems in my. Um, I thought I still had an Iris one for some reason, but that might have been the one. Your your Iris your Iris until it needs it. Yes. And then it flips over. Like it, if I look at mine, it scales. Yeah. Or, yeah. Oh, so it's it's Iris and then switches the Radeon. Yeah, because that's why I, that's why I get the high end one because I want the discrete GPU that'll. Mm-hmm. You know, churn video a lot better. Uh, first 4K project is out, by the way. Uh, fully 4K, not just uh, filming proposal videos on Matt Washington like the other day. Uh, but uh, no, the Formula SAE um, highlight reel um, for Nevada is up, and that is, I believe, is fully posted in 4K. So um, I got it. It keeps. Um, Final Cut keeps tricking me and and trying to edit in, in uh, HD, and I'm like, this doesn't this doesn't seem. Come on, there's no way this file's this small that I look at it, it's like HD. It's like okay. How long does it take to render 4K? Um, I'm on a 2018 MacBook Pro i7, <laughs> 16 gigs of RAM. Um, it was only about a four minute and change video, so I mean, it seemed pretty much comparable to what. You know, I, I, I noticed like some slight slowdowns while editing, like so, like pauses here and there, but nothing terrible uh, on something like that. But there was like here and there, there was a little crunch of, ooh, now I kind of wish I want, had an M1 because I hear that this this moves like butter kind of thing, right? Like it's the first time I've had a pinch on regular footage for a while that wasn't like a four camera multi you know, or, or <laughs> one time for a music video I did about a 10 camera multi cam switch. Uh, so uh for all the takes and uh that got a little fishy but also just hd at that time too so um but no it seemed to handle it pretty decent but also it's only a four minute video it's not like i was doing a movie right that's so true. or and again i don't see myself doing a four cam multi-cam switch where they're all running at the same time uh in 4k i only have one 4k camera uh for okay. one thing other than my iphone but um yes all right. Well, uh, I know we got a little bit delayed because we had a little bit of technical glitch here earlier in the show. Uh, but, uh, Kraus, thank you for joining us. And, of course, we got all the Xbox updates while you were here. And uh, enjoy your small plane trips. Thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> I hope everything's going good for you there. Uh, I hope everything uh, uh, works out for you where, where you're at. So, um, Crazy Kraus on the Twitters. And, of course, Chilla is at Chilla on the Twitters. Josh, chill on the Facebooks. Absolutely. And uh, chill of variants uh, is in the chat with <laughs> partner. And Katie, the Katie variant. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you are, of course, the Kate Dutters on the Twitter and over on the Instagram. You are? Uh, Kate Marie PGH. There you go. Find out what's, what 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 uh, appointment uh, outfit she has on this week. So... <laughs> 
Um, and very inspirational lately, by the way. Uh, so um, definitely with the Instagram stories. I appreciate those. Sometimes I need them. Sometimes I really need them. So We uh, all need them. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. Push the positive. Oh, hey, and, and, and a positive out the door. Uh, I just retweeted this uh, a little bit before the show. Uh, it was in a news article, but uh, Xbox. Uh, when uh, apparently there were some fans attempting to stoke the uh, the console wars again, and there was a fantastic tweet to set from Xbox's uh, official Twitter that I'll leave you there to the people in our replies saying PS5 is better. <clears throat> Excuse me. For the people in our replies in our replies saying that PS5 is better, the best console is the one you enjoy playing. Have fun. Just like the best podcast is the one that you're enjoying right now, which is hopefully this one. And thank you, everybody. We'll see you guys next time. Uh, you have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.